G'day everyone, welcome to my arts channel Brushes with Beck. In today's video I want to look at this paper. This is Derwent Academy paper. It is an artist watercolour paper, acid free, 300 GSM. Um, I wanted to try it out, I haven't tried it out before. It's a cheaper paper, it has an unusual feel, it's almost a little bit uh, plasticky in a way, <laughs> which doesn't sound good, but it has this texture on the front, like a canvas texture on the front that you can see here, and then the back side is smooth. So what I wanted to do was cut one of the sheets in half, so I've got the textured side on one sheet and the smooth side on the other. You can compare these two textures here, it's quite a substantial difference between the two sides of the paper. And then we're going to use my Faber-Castell Albrecht Stewart watercolour pencils to create a drawing, uh, the same drawing, on these two separate pieces of paper. So that's what we're going to get to today and I really hope you get something out of it. I thought, I know I do a lot of work on, I guess, more expensive papers, so I wanted to give something like this a go, something that's really accessible, at least in Australian shops anyway, you can get this paper at Big W and it's really cheap. So you can see on the left is the textured side of the paper and on the right hand side is the smooth. Now the textured side in the pad it's actually the front of the paper so the textured side is the is the top, is the surface you're supposed to use. Um, now I found uh, obviously laying down colour pencil on this canvassy texture really highlights the texture on this paper and you get a little bit of texture coming through on the smooth side but not too much. So what I'm doing here side by side is I am laying down everything the same on each piece of paper as I go. I thought that would be the best way to make it as similar as possible rather than completing one piece and then doing the piece again on the other paper. I thought if I did them simultaneously it's got the best chance of being a fair comparison. So with this first application of water I didn't have any trouble. I was actually quite surprised how well this paper took the water. There wasn't really any substantial bubbling, there wasn't any uh, loss of paper texture, it didn't pull up or anything at all. So I was quite impressed by that and I suspect that um, because the paper has kind of a plasticky feel, I don't really know how to explain it other than that, it's, it seems quite durable. So, um, which is really really good. So what I've done is I've applied the water over those first colours that I've applied, those greens, and then allowed that to dry a little bit before working in my next lot of colours and applying water over that. So the really important thing when working with watercolour pencils is to ensure that you allow the paper to fully dry before you apply more pencil over the top because that will uh, damage the paper. I didn't try it on this paper but I'm assuming it would have damaged the paper because it almost always does with other watercolour papers. So yeah basically just working through this process and I'm being pretty messy because I wanted to see how well the pencil blended out on here as well and they've and they've done a good job. Um, the only thing I suppose, the only difference I've noticed so far is that um, the colour, it seems to stay a bit bolder on the textured side and that was peculiar and I couldn't quite work out why that was um, and it, on the video it doesn't look like the colour is more bold on the left hand side but that's simply because the lights are, uh, my, for my setup here for recording are closer to that side so that side is more brightly lit than the drawing on the right hand side. Um, but keep in mind that from my perspective of completing this I found that the colours stayed more rich on the textured side even if it looks like I had applied less colour initially. And so I could apply a thicker layer of colour, what seemed like a thicker layer of colour on the smooth paper like you see here with that sort of reddish brown colour and then once I go over with the paintbrush and it dries and it sort of looks like the same sort of application of colour, it to me it always looks like it was still more bold on the textured paper than it was on the smooth side. So ultimately I think what that was is I realised the 
the smooth side of the paper, the colours tended to um, have softer edges, so there weren't abrupt sharp edges. I found on the textured side of the paper, the the colours bled together less, so there was, and the edges tended to be more sharp. And I suspect that has to do with the paper texture itself. Uh, the little ridges are preventing the water from spreading as much as opposed to on the smooth side of the paper the water can spread a little bit more freely over the surface of the paper and so you get softer edges to your colours rather than um, sharp edges. So that might be something to consider if you're looking at picking up some of this paper and wondering well which side should I use uh, that's going to play into that. So just working through the horse here and you might be wondering why in the heck I have put purple on the horse's neck and face and that's really just to make those shadows nice and rich and dark and get some lovely uh, sort of complementary type colours in there to really help make that pop. Oh and what I'm actually drawing is a, forgive my pronunciation on this, is a she's Shizwalski's <laughs> Wild Horse. Uh, so this is a, I think it's considered one of the last sort of true wild horses. Um, they are actually highly endangered or critically endangered probably and where I photographed this one is at a safari park. They have a breeding population there and they have actually contributed horses that have been released back into the wild, which is absolutely fantastic. So breeding programs for this species in zoos are absolutely critical for ensuring the survival of this species in the wild. So that's really, really exciting to have such a rare species like this accessible to me to be able to photograph to do drawings like this. So um, it wasn't a highly detailed photo because I took it from quite a distance away, but I didn't need a lot of detail for this watercolour piece anyway uh, because doing that would have taken me much much longer and I like watercolour for having a bit more of a loose look anyway. So with the legs here you can see I've gone over that again with the black, it wasn't dark enough the first time so I've darkened that up more again with another layer of black, gone over that once again with the water, didn't have any trouble reapplying water over areas where I had already used water. Um, like I said, as long as your paper's dry, this paper takes multiple applications of water very, very well. I didn't have any trouble with that at all. So in terms of performance, I found this paper really, really good in terms of holding up to wear and tear of how I use the paper, scribbling over it with the pencil, applying water, letting it dry, scribbling over with the pencil again, applying more water. I didn't find any there was no compromising on how well the paper was accepting pencil or uh, you know how hard it was to apply colour once I'd already applied some water. I find some watercolour papers, once you apply water, let it dry and come back with your pencil, it can be a bit harder to apply pencil the next time around, but I didn't have that trouble with this one at all, especially on the textured side for obvious reasons because that texture really grips the pencil nicely. So. In terms of if you're looking to do work on this paper with watercolour and then you want to finish it up with maybe some colour pencil detail on top, really probably don't recommend the textured side uh, because all you're going to do is end up with a lot of paper texture and it's just that clear gridded sort of canvas type pattern. Uh, so if you're looking to do an underpainting of watercolours with colour pencil over the top with some nice details, probably go for the smoother side and use some nice sharp pencils for your details over the top. But if you're just looking to do some loose watercolour painting and you want it to have a nice... I really like that nice look with the um, sort of paper texture coming through on this watercolour piece on the left hand side. I thought that was quite nice. and I, liked, I didn't think I was going to like it, but I did. So as I said, I find the colours a bit richer in the textured paper. As I said, I think that is simply there's less, I suppose, bleeding of the colours. It doesn't soak out as much, so you get harsher edges versus the softer lines on the smooth side of the paper. 
So it really was quite an experimental thing for me and I hope this uh, video has been helpful to you. I was actually really pleasantly surprised, like I said, with how well this paper held up. I didn't have any problems applying pencil, I didn't have any problems applying water, and it just accepted everything I threw at it, which was absolutely fantastic. Keep in mind it is only sort of just a student grade paper, I suppose. It's not anything fancy. Um, who knows how long it would really last. It's acid free, but uh, that doesn't mean it's going to last a super, super long time. And as you can see, the tape came off really smoothly and cleanly, and I didn't have any pulling with that either, which is absolutely fantastic. Here you can see a close up of that difference in texture. It's got that beautiful canvasy texture on the left hand side and a beautiful smooth texture on the right hand side. So it really, really depends on what you're going to pr prefer for the finish, finishing look of your piece. In terms of a budget paper, for playing around something like this. I found it really, really worthwhile. So thank you very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up, comment down below, subscribe to my channel, and I'll see you again next week for another one. Stay creative.